Welcome back, welcome back, any and all, glad you all could come back to hear the word. Not only hear the word, but the doers of the word, glory be to a higher. I sure hope when you woke up this morning, you told Father God, thank you. Here to see that woke us up, we didn't wake ourselves up, no, we can't do that. We can't even breathe on our own, believe it or not. And I sure hope you told your loved ones that you love them, we're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Hallelujah. Today, we're still in the book of Luke, chapter 9, instructions for the 12 apostles. I sure hope you all are saved. You're giving your life to Christ Jesus. You go down on your knees in prayer, crying out to the Father in sincerity and truth. And if you don't know him, keep crying out to him till you hear from him. He will answer you. He know your heart. Not only that, he'll begin to teach you the word of God. He teach me. He's continually teaching me. We know that he that has begun a good work will not stop until the day of Christ coming. Hallelujah. We are blessed. And I hope you're having a daily life of repentance because we live in these fleshly bodies and the flesh is always warring with the spirit. So we need to repent. Right? I love you all with the love of the Lord. That's why I tell you the truth. And Father God loves you more. Another thing. Please read God's word. The Bible. The Holy Bible. Preferably the King James Version. Read your Bible daily. Numerous times in a day if need. But please. Read your Bible and pray. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Before we begin our reading. We're going to say a prayer for children of all ages. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you today to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for every day. Thank you, Father, for our parents that you give us that train us up by your word. And we love them. Thank you, Father, for giving us siblings that we love. And thank you, Father, for teaching us to treat others the way that we want to be treated with love and respect. We love you, my Father. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Amen indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Luke chapter 9, Instructions for the Twelve Apostles. Jesus called together his twelve apostles and gave them complete power over all demons and diseases. Then he sent them to tell about God's kingdom and to heal the sick. He told them, don't take anything with you. Don't take a walking stick or a traveling bag or food or money or even a change of clothes. When you are welcome into a home, stay there until you leave that town. If people won't welcome you, Leave the town and shake the dust from your feet as a warning to them. The apostles left and went from village to village, telling the good news and healing people everywhere. Herod is worried. Herod, the ruler, heard about all that was happening, and he was worried. Some people were saying that John the Baptist had come back to life. Others were saying that Elijah had come, or that one of the prophets from long ago had come back to life. But Herod said, I had John's head cut off. Who is this I hear so much about? Herod was eager to meet Jesus. Jesus feeds 5,000. The apostles came back and told Jesus everything they had done. He then took them with him to the village of Bethsaida, where they could be alone. But a lot of people found out about this and followed him. Jesus welcomed them. He spoke to them about God's kingdom and healed everyone who was sick. Late in the afternoon, the 12 apostles came to Jesus and said, Send the crowd to the villages and farms er around here. They need to find a place to stay and something to eat. There is nothing in this place. It is like a desert. Jesus answered, You give them something to eat. But they replied, We have only five small loaves of bread and two fish. If we are going to feed all these people, we will have to go and buy food. There were about 5,000 men in the crowd. Jesus said to his disciples, Have the people sit in groups of 50. They did this, and all the people sat down. Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up toward heaven and blessed the food. Then he broke the bread and fish and handed them to his disciples to give to the people. Everyone ate all they wanted. What was left over filled twelve baskets. Who is Jesus? When Jesus was alone praying, his disciples came to him, and he asked them, What do people say about me? They answered, some say that you are John the Baptist or Elijah or a prophet from long ago and who has come back to life. Jesus then asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah sent from God. Jesus strictly warned his disciples not to tell anyone about it. Jesus speaks about his suffering and death. Jesus told his disciples, the nation's leaders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law of Moses will make the son of man suffer terribly. They will reject him and kill him. 
but three days later he will rise to life. Then Jesus said to all the people, If any of you want to be my followers, you must forget about yourself. You must take up your cross each day and follow me. If you want to save your life, you will lose it. But if you, if you give up your life for me, you will save it. What will you gain if you, if you own the whole world but destroy yourself or waste your life? If you are ashamed of me and my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of you when he comes in his glory and in the glory of his Father and the holy angels. You can be sure that some of the people standing here will not die before they see God's kingdom. The true glory of Jesus. About eight days later, Jesus took Peter, John, and James with him and went up on a mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed and his clothes became shining white. Suddenly Moses and Elijah were there speaking with him. They appeared in heaven, heavenly glory, and talked about all that Jesus' death talked about all that Jesus' death in Jerusalem would mean. Peter and the other two disciples had been sound asleep. All at once they woke up and saw how glorious Jesus was. They also saw the two men who were with him. Moses and Elijah were about to leave when Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But Peter did not know what he was talking about. While Peter was still speaking, a shadow from a cloud passed over them, and they were frightened as the cloud covered them. From the cloud a voice spoke, This is my chosen son, my well-beloved, my only begotten. Listen to what he says. After the voice had spoken, Peter, John, and James saw only Jesus. For some time they kept quiet and did not say anything about what they had seen. Jesus heals a boy. The next day, Jesus and his, and his three disciples came down from the mountain and were met by a large crowd. Jesus then, some, just then, someone in the crowd shouted, Teacher, please do something for my son. He is my only child. A demon often attacks him and makes him, and makes him scream. It shakes him while he foams at the mouth, and it won't leave him until it has completely worn the boy out. I begged your disciples to force out the demon, but they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, You people are stubborn and don't have any faith. How much longer must I be with you? Why do I have to put up with you? Then Jesus said to the man, Bring your son to me. While the boy was being brought, the demon attacked him and made him shake all over. Jesus ordered the demon to stop. Then he healed the boy and gave him back to his father. Everyone was amazed at God's great power. Jesus again speaks about his death. While everyone was still amazed at what Jesus was doing, he said to his disciples, Pay close attention to what I am telling you. The Son of Man will be handed over to his enemies. But the disciples did not know what he meant. The meaning was hidden from them. They could not understand it, and they were afraid to ask. Who is the greatest? Jesus' disciples were arguing about which one of them was the greatest. Jesus knew what they were thinking. And he had a child stand there beside him. Then he said to his disciples, When you welcome even a child because of me, you welcome me. And when you welcome me, you welcome the one who sent me. Whichever one of you is the most humble is the greatest. For or against Jesus, John said, Master, we saw a man using your name to force demons out of people. But we told him to stop because he isn't one of us. Don't stop him, Jesus said. Anyone who isn't against us is for us. A Samaritan village a Samaritan village refuses to receive Jesus. Not long before it was time for Jesus to be taken up to heaven, he made up his mind to go to Jerusalem. He sent some messengers on ahead to a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But he was on his way to Jerusalem. So the people were refused the people there refused to welcome him. When the disciples when the disciples, James and John, saw what was happening, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to destroy these people? But Jesus turned and corrected them for what they had said. They, that then they all went on to another village. Three people who wanted to be followers. Along the way, someone said to Jesus, I'll go anywhere with you. Jesus said, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man doesn't have a place to call his own. Jesus told someone else to come with him, but the man said, Lord, 
Let me wait until I bury my father. Jesus answered, let the dead take care of the dead while you go and tell about God's kingdom. Then someone said to Jesus, I want to go back. I want to go with you, Lord. But first, let me go back and take care of things at home. Jesus answered, anyone who starts plowing and keeps looking back isn't worth a thing to God's kingdom. Mm. God's willing tomorrow. We'll come back still in the book of Luke chapter 10, the work of the 72 followers. You all tell your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Tell them all about Father God who gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all our sins. He didn't die for one of some. He died for us all. And if you, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you haven't given your life to Christ Jesus, what are you waiting for? Please give your life to Jesus today while it's still called today. Father God says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's not something up for debate or discussion. Please do it. And if you have any unforgiveness in your heart, let it go. Please let it go. If you don't forgive your fellow man, your father who art in heaven is not going to forgive you either. I love you all to love the Lord. That's why I tell you the truth. And Father God loves you more. You all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day. Children of all ages, from youngest to oldest alike, God bless you. Bye-bye.